On the line, uh, we're very excited to have Senator Jeff Merkley, who will talk to us about this week and what it means for, because it's going to help define the future of our Supreme Court. Um, and I just want to, I, I want to do that time check partly so that uh, Senator Merkley has enough time for his presentation, and then hopefully so we have enough time for some question and answer, because we do have a hard cutoff at 9.05 Eastern time, if not a little earlier. So we're honored to have Senator Merkley, who I understand is on the line. He's a pro great progressive champion, a resistance leader in the Senate, and the first senator to publicly declare his intention to filibuster the nomination of Neil Gorsuch. Uh, senator Merkley, welcome. Welcome to the call. Uh, thank you so much, Merdad, and, and thank you to everyone who's who's been uh, speaking and our, our, our grassroots organizers, Elizabeth, for your ideas for Minnesota, and Aaron for what's coming up this week. Uh, what an incredibly important time. I have held seven town halls in the only Republican congressional district in Oregon, and I can tell you that not one person came to my town hall and told me they supported Trump care. So, and they are upset for all the reasons you've been talking about, for the the impact on, on Medicaid expansion, on the impact on regular Medicaid, on the impact on our, our older Americans, 45 through, or 55 through 65, the whole set of reasons. People are panicked. They are ready to respond. You're all responding. Thank you so much. And now we have this other incredibly important battle over the Supreme Court. This seat is a stolen seat. This has never happened before in our history. Never before has a House majority taken an empty seat, refused to consider a president's nomination, refused to vet them, refused to vote on them in committee, refused to have that conversation at all. And they put it in a time capsule, that empty seat. They sent it forward into the next administration, hoping that time capsule would be opened by conservative Republican who would nominate a very conservative nominee, and their wishes have occurred, but it is really an illegitimate process. And then if you want to look just at the nominee himself, Neil Gorsuch, there's every reason to be deeply concerned. This is an individual who has spent decades putting corporate and special interests above the interests of middle-class Americans. He is so far to the right that he would be the furthest right, the most conservative justice on the court. He has been described as being more conservative than Antonin Scalia. It's terrifying. 60% of Americans that are pro-choice are worried by his decision in Hobby Lobby where he sided with religious employers who wanted to limit their employees' rights to contraception they were legally entitled to under the Affordable Care Act. Americans who want transparency know that we're not going to get a vote against the dark money that is completely corrupting our we the people representative democracy. We know that he dislikes class action lawsuits because he has said so because he thinks that those are inconvenient for corporations. This is an individual who whenever he could find against labor, against workers, for corporations, against transparency, for right wing, he has done so. So we need to encourage the members of the Judiciary Committee to ask every single difficult question. I don't know that we'll get answers, but this week, the vetting is, we have to pay attention to it in America at the same time we're stopping the House from passing health care. This is going to be a decision that will be critical to all the things that we care about. And, and I said, well, I know time was short, so I want to stop uh, right there, and I'll be happy to comment on this issue of we must maintain the 60-vote standard for closing debate and have those senators, those 60 senators, ready to vote no on closing debate. Senator Merkley, thank you so much for that that uh, the level of sense of urgency and, and for briefing us about uh, about this nomination. I, I just want to start with this first question. Um, so we've heard that some Democrats are considering cutting a deal with Republicans in which they agree not to filibuster Gorsuch in exchange for Republicans agreeing to not to use the nuclear option and then eliminate the filibuster for the next Republican Supreme Court nominee, if there is one. And I'm wondering what would you say to Democrats who would consider that kind of deal? There are some Democrats who are from very red states 
who are looking for an argument that they can justify voting to close debate, that is, voting to end a filibuster. And the argument they're making is, well, if we don't do this now, they don't change the rule, we'll still have the rule in the place for the next nominee. However, that is a completely phony argument because there is no, no reason they can't simply change the rule when the next nominee comes up. And then we get two very conservative justices. And it's not at all clear they will change the rule if we maintain the filibuster. So we absolutely have to take that artificial, contrived argument and toss it aside, give it no legitimacy, tell those senators it has no legitimacy. We've got to maintain it. I misspoke, but we have to maintain the 41 vote against closing debate. 41 senators have to absolutely stand together and maintain the debate, not let it be closed. 